Hello friends, you're the Lonesome Gamer and this is probably gonna be my last video about Archipelago. And it looks really good. My goal is to have as little unemployed people as possible. The game ends after the last three tiles I explored and until now we have here four unemployed people. But I guess it will be possible to reduce this number in the next terms. So we start activating our meeples. Here we go. Okay, and that one, okay, and then we have the effects of this of these tables. We have one additional unemployed person here because we have too much stone. So this goes up to five, and then we have an additional one here because there are so many people, six and an additional rebel. Okay. And then we have to solve the crisis here. First there is a demand for wood. One wood for five people. So we have now 37 inhabitants on the archipelago. 17 of them are on places with churches, on tiles with churches. So in the end we have to take care of 20 meeples. So we have to pay exactly 4 wood. So we can pay 3 from the local market and 1 from my own goods. And then we have to pay two fish from the foreign market. No fish is here in the foreign market, but we have exactly two fish. So fine. Okay, that looks good. And now we come to the action phase. And first I'm going to collect some resources, I guess. I'm going to collect fish. So, uh, yeah, place the fish here. I activate the commercial fishing. Pay one. And then I can activate my ships, these three and they give me then six fish. Okay. And in addition, I might actually some sell some fish. Oh uh, no, that's not possible in this turn. So I'm gonna pay one on the harbor here and I'm gonna sell two fish to the foreign market. Or maybe it's even better to sell one fish and one iron. And that gives me then 14. Okay, fine. With a lot of money, so no need to fear anything here. And then I will take some stone, place that here, and I think I'll activate the quarrel. I think that's the name for it. 
I'm not absolutely sure, but I think. And I pay one. Uh, here you go. And now let's see. Can go here. One, two, three. Four. So that gives me eight stone and there are just seven left I guess so three four five six seven oops okay so now there is no threat that there could be any problems coming from a crisis <clears throat> Then I'm going to hire some people. I'm going to hire three. So this goes down, one, two, three, and this goes up, one, two, three. And uh, I gain now three additional meeples, and I have to use the last, the last color. So I'll place now one here and another one probably here and the next one here I guess. Okay. And then I'm going to activate the emigration uh, I'm not sure maybe I activate the the education and reduce the number of unemployed people by two so it's now at one My next action is a exploration action and now I'm going to use the explorer and I want to see what the last three tiles look like. So I hope there is no problem. We can take a look at them now. With the explorer you can take a look at the first three tiles and uh, choose one of them. So let's see if we can win this or not. I think this is the, the last problem if we are somehow really unlucky so that it's not possible to place a tile. But I think this, this shouldn't be the problem. So it should be possible to... Uh, let me see. You can place the volcano like that. And on the other side we have this. And uh, That is actually not so easy. But we could also place this like this. That seems even better. And then we have this thing here. We could place that here, for example. Or we have another mountain tile that we can also place here. So that's fine. And then we have the last mountain tile here. You can place it here, yeah. So it's, it's looking good, it's really looking awesome. No big deal. Okay, so uh, right now I think I'm gonna use this one, the Volcano, and I place it up here. Uh, Ah, by the way, that's not possible because there is no meeple we can move to do the exploration. Ah, that's, that's a little bad. But I can do a migration in the next turn and so I could use this thing later. Okay, then I'll take another one, maybe that one. Yeah, that looks fine. Hmm. 
Hmm. Well, I can easily place this one here, for example. That is good. Okay, I'll do this. I'll take this one and simply place it here. Just like that. Okay, great. The others are discarded and I'm gonna shuffle. It doesn't matter because I can simply use the Explorer in the next turn. So uh, there shouldn't be any problem. And, but I can also shuffle them and build another pile. Mm, not sure yet. But whatever, first there'll be some fruits for the local market. Here we go. There is no cattle and no iron left, so I cannot gain any goods here. Then we have two huts, so we're now at three. And uh, yeah, that's. Oh, of course, I'll get an exploration marker. And then we're done here. And now we come to the last turn. And I'll do a migration action. Place that one here. And, well, let me see now. I think this is basically all fine. I want to place that ship now here so that I can move with I can explore with the ship then this other island and uh, yeah I think that's basically it and then I can use the emigration and that allows me to reduce the unemployed people by four. So there is no unemployed person right now. Okay, these were my five actions. Okay, and then we'll buy a card. And, well, which one will that be? I could simply buy the the presence of the Claris for five and they allow me to, do, to reduce the rebels by paying um, some resources and that costs me five and then I can turn two cards and I think I will turn the Queen and the Assassin Then I have to resolve another card and that says false prophet. That's interesting. You can migrate one inhabitant per church. That's a great card, that's really interesting. But uh, sadly it's now a little late. And there is no crisis, so it's all fine. And I will deactivate now my meeples for the next turn. Then we'll gain one. This is probably the last turn, by the way, maybe if I'm, if I'm playing this clever. So we gain now an additional worker here. So we are at one. And uh, that's basically it, I think. And then we, we gain a new rebel and another worker. But because of the little workers, 
one rebel goes away now. So it's really looking good. Now we have to pay fish. There is a demand for fish. One fish is good for five meeples. Now let me check this again. We have now 40 meeples. That's quite a lot. So let me see. We have here a church with three. Another one with three makes six. Eight. Eleven. Fourteen. Seventeen. So seventeen people are not affected because they're on a tile with a church. So that brings this down to 23. So we need to pay five fish to make everyone happy. We have four fish in the local market and enough fish here for myself. And then we have here this card, uh, this effect that allows me to remove two rebels per church. So, and I thought I had four or five churches. One, two, three, four. Well, there are actually five churches, so I could remove ten rebels. That's ridiculous. No problem at all. Fine. And then, let's see what we can do now. So, I think I will simply do a an exploration. And I shuffled these now again and yeah, I mean, doesn't matter. I take the topmost tile here and I simply can place that here and then if I'm not completely mistaken I can place the other one there. Yeah, that should be no problem at all. Fine, so eh. so that tile goes here now, and I move with this guy right here. Oh my god, great! Okay, and well. There is some wood left, so there is one wood for the local market, but nothing for me. And then there are two huts. So there are now four unemployed people. And I forget the explorer marker and that is now an important part. Actually, you can see this down here in the rules. The first thing that happens if you explore is you place the tile. The second thing is you get the explorer marker. Then you give the uh, the, res the resources on the market gain your own resources and the last thing is you adjust the table with these um, unemployed workers. And now the game ends exactly at the moment when the last explorer marker is gone. So we have to remember that next time the exploration phase I can place that thing, the tile, then I take the explorer marker before I adjust this thing so the game then immediately ends. Okay, and uh, yeah, that was the exploration phase. And now I can play the, uh, the emigration again. And I can remove now four uh, four of these four unemployed people so I have now zero unemployed people 
And now I can simply do my second exploration. And after hours of playing, it seems I come to a successful ending. I can take that thing, simply place it here. My ship moves then here. Eh. And I'll take that last exploration marker. And that's the end of the game. And now, as you can see, there is no unemployed person. And I can proudly say I made the gold result. So I'm really happy. I did that good, I think. I was, yeah. Great. Okay, just take a look over this wonderful board. I think this, this looks really cool. Here are the mountains, the lake here, the sea with some islands, and here the country. I really like that. I think that's a very, very nice art and a very good board. Um, it seemed pretty easy. The scenario really seemed easy. I think the, 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 basic, the basic concept in this case was to go really slow. Not to become hasty, not to, not to explore too fast. Always try to reduce the unemployed people and take care of the rebels see that you have enough resources so everything is fine then. I was lucky at the beginning I was really lucky that I found that card that education card that was extremely important that improved my chances a lot and a little later on this emigration that's also a great card if you combine these with some harbors that is uh, very powerful then Um, it's definitely harder if you don't have these cards, that's, that's for sure. And um, there are also some people who say I was extremely lucky with, these, uh, with, the, with the tiles, that they came in this order so that I could place them all, that, they, this, that this all fits. I don't know, maybe that's true. I'm, it's the first time I played a uh, game that long uh, with Archipelago. But, uh, as I already said, it, it doesn't have to be that, well, kind of boring or so. I mean, it took me, you can see every, every card is one turn. So I think these were about 20 turns or something. But uh, as you can see here, even with the long games, and that is a long game here, in this case, for example, you have to be, uh, you have to finish in 10 turns and have as little uh, re rebels as possible. But here you've got to be much faster. And in some, here for example, that's another long game. You need three victory points to gain victory points, uh, for example, by uh, building wonders. And here, you gotta be, you gotta try to be as fast as possible. Six turns or less, and you win. So, as you can see in this specific scenario, I could take as much time as I want it. But that is an exception. Normally, you, yeah, normally that's not possible. In addition to this, you have here some short scenarios, and you can see they want you to do this in less than four turns or four or five turns. 
So there's really a big difference. You'll be much faster here. It's the same thing. So there are lots of different scenarios and mostly you have to be really fast and every mistake you, you're doing uh, will will make you lose this game or maybe not lose this game uh, because losing normally means that you that there is a rebellion and it, it should be possible to prevent rebellions but uh, if you want to reach uh, just some award you normally have to risk something and you got to be you got to play that fast and and it might even come down to a rebellion then so just a few words to this game until now i have not played it in multiplayer so i i cannot give a statement here how it works with these secret goals and and this well kind of traitor mechanic or so uh, there is this separatist who can be involved in the game who might try to 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 push uh, the the rebels but um as i said i don't know that there were some complaints about these uh, mechanisms but i cannot say anything about that the solitaire game is great. I really like it. I played, uh, I think, three. Uh, no, I played two short scenarios and I lost terribly. I played a middle scenario where I also was not very successful. So that was actually the first time I did really good. And I always... In every scenario I had a lot of fun. This one was long and I took my time but I enjoyed playing this. It's a uh, yeah just to explore to build so it's it's, it's kind of cool it's relaxing to do this and you have to concentrate you you shouldn't make too much mistakes here too because um, well I think you can get into trouble if you play this too too hasty. I said it before, the artwork of the game is absolutely amazing. The tiles look just wonderful. There's so many so many details here. You can see that. It's it's just fantastic. And uh I also love the cards, great artwork here, they look really cool. So that, that adds a lot of atmosphere to this game. It doesn't feel like a typical Euro if, you, if there is something like it, but it feels really, it, it's really a game with a lot of atmosphere. And uh, I enjoyed it very much. Lots of replayability because of the different scenarios, the different length of the scenarios, the fact that you can determine how long you want to play is, is just great. That's a, that's a wonderful idea, I think. And, well, component quality is awesome. So I think, even though I'm more a Ameritrash gamer, I think this might become one of my favorite games. I think it's possible. If you get more and more into the mechanics, then you can also try the maybe harder scenarios, the short scenarios, and it's uh, really getting even more interesting, I think. So, yeah, lots of fun, great game. And uh, I hope it wasn't too boring for you to watch this. And uh, I hope to see you in one of my next videos. Until then, bye.